you guys got to give me some credit. On top of actually watching WrestleMania 30 on my laptop, I watched the reviews, all the reviews I can find from major IDWC personalities and the guys that do it on the side. I went on JTV two nights ago and I discussed this with some other people on there. We chatted about it. The streak is over. There's no doubt about it. Lesnar won. The record is 21 and 1. He was the guy that finally ended Undertaker's undefeated streak at WrestleMania. And people are heartbroken about this. <laughs> I mean, that black guy's face has become the best meme in the world. And this almost killed WrestleMania 3. It almost killed Daniel Bryan's night. In fact, it probably did succeed. Because, in actuality, the shock of what just happened really is what epitomized WrestleMania 30. And not all that nice stuff on the side. All of that is going to represent not an event but several disjointed events that are a result of a period that's taking place in time, this new reality era. Daniel Bryan finally winning the belts. It's going to be something that happened in WrestleMania 30, but it's not going to be associated with WrestleMania 30. One thing I do want to make as a point is my initial reaction when this happened. Now, from beginning, the pre-show, the first match, the opening segment actually, with Hogan, Rock, and Austin. The first match with Daniel Bryan and Triple H. Bathroom break match with The Shield. Cesaro winning the Andre the Giant Memorial. Even that, sh once they got to Cena versus Bray Wyatt, once the bell rung and all the cool entrances were completed, this is where Mania started going down a little. This is where the descent began. With that shitty psychology match. It's all psychology, and the story that it's telling is stupid, and the match itself is dumb. There's no way this storyline will have a good resolve, but who knows, I could be wrong. I always could be. The point is, what was my reaction to Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar? Initially... And I am being serious. I thought that there was something wrong with my health or something. That maybe I didn't eat, or maybe I'm tired, or maybe I just need to go out and you know, take a walk, rekindle my senses, because the match seemed boring to me. Like, am I not looking at this right? Why does this seem so dull? And then there's a three count, a silence. And the silence was really serious. Paul Heyman himself made his face was all covered up. Everyone was in shock. People just say they act like the bell didn't ring. I heard the bell ring. The theme song didn't play straight away. And that's an interesting sell. But I've heard the fucking bell. Don't give me that bullshit. Everyone's telling me that. Everyone's telling me that Undertaker got his shoulder up or there was a concussion somewhere. Shut up. Please shut up. I can't blame you because this is 
sort of a shock. And last time we got something this shocking, well, less shocking actually, was the pipe bomb with CM Punk in 2011. And... That was cool. This is mortifying and horrible because nobody wants it to be Brock Lesnar. After I saw some stuff about it on the forums, I saw all my friends from high school, middle school, elementary school, uh, all walks of life. They were all shocked about this. This girl, my first kiss, actually, she that like made a post on Facebook. Now everybody's a wrestling fan all of a sudden. You need to hop on a damn bandwagon. But, yeah, this was dumb. This did not need to happen. But I spoke to it with my little bro. Because I'm trying to look for anyone to make sense of this shit. And he, even he said it himself. He said, Why Lesnar? Why Brock Lesnar? Why did he have to be the one? <laughs> so even him, a 12 year old NBA fan, a Knicks fan, a Carmelo Anthony fan, he knew something was wrong. <laughs> what does that tell you? 90 IQ have an asshole. And then moreover, I went on JTV and did what I promised. I basically told everyone what I felt about Mania. I gave a review. And I promised I would give a review on JTV. I mean, you already know what I had to say. All the matches besides everything after Cesaro winning and before Daniel Bryan winning. Anything around that, that's all good. This is horrible, though. They told me, this one guy told me that I shouldn't be surprised that Undertaker put off a mediocre match since... He is old, and I know that. But moreover, he doesn't work good matches with bigger guys. That's something I've realized. His match with CM Punk was really good. It sold a show last year because Punk's a smaller guy. I look back at Taker's great matches. Taker versus Shawn Michaels. Taker versus a young Randy Orton. Or Edge. And these slim guys. Not these jacked ass mofos. Of course that principle doesn't always work. I mean you could say his matches with Triple H were great. Even though I think the whole streak shit probably should have ended right there. Based on the stuff Spoonie has said. But that's that other thing. Lots of people said that this was a great thing, but it shouldn't have been Brock. It was a mistake. Schlag Daddy himself. I'm just talking about other opinions now. Moving on to the reviews. Schlag Daddy himself said that This kind of made him realize he's not a kid anymore. The streak was always this thing that brought him back to that childlike state. And now it's gone and he feels cheated. He feels like the WWE is hitting on themselves because they're saying a UFC guy is better than them. And it's Brock Lesnar of all people, the guy that lost to Triple H. And John Cena in his return. And the guy that abandoned them. Spoonie himself said that... 
Well, he said a lot of stuff. He said that it was a big shock. Primarily, and it was a beautiful shock, too. We, we're used to, like, seeing Taker get, like, three finishers, five finishers, seven finishers, of varying extremities, and varying kinds that are extreme, and still kicking out. Even his own finisher. Like, we don't consider it a possibility that his streak is in danger until a third finisher comes into play. And it was that third F5 that really... No one expected, no one probably even looked at it. And he made an excellent point. I remember when I saw the three count, I thought, holy shit, is the Armageddon happening? I was almost tempted to turn around and see if uh, hailstorms were flying and seven-headed demons were emerging. But such wasn't the case. It was just... Yeah, they really decided to go with it. And they were mortified. Some, a lot of people had their eyes open really wide as an initial reaction. But once the Divas match, the Invitational match, the V Grow shit happened, I looked and it was no longer people with bulging rated R superstar edge eyes. It was guys that had grief. They had grief. They acted like a family member died. That's the same exact face. That's the same exact complexion of the room. It's all of that. <laughs> they were going through the seven stages of grief. All in that night. And I'm glad that <laughs> for the people that stayed, they got to enjoy Daniel Bryan in that triple threat match. They got to at least see that and come into play. <laughs> but this was terrible. And from all the sources of information I saw, one of my early concerns was, well, what about Taker versus Sting? I thought that was going to happen. Well, seeing Raw after Mania, and that was the last source of information I needed to make a video like this, I realized he's not there. What if... This thing is just doing his yearly bullshit, and he's never going to be in the WWE. Taker needed to move on. I hope, medically speaking, Taker is better now. After his experience in the hospital, his trip to the hospital a few days ago. And I wish best for him. And... I'm not grieving anymore. I'm not gonna lie, I was kinda shocked. Even a few hours ago, the shock was still present, but it's gone now. It doesn't exist anymore. At least not in my heart. Of hearts. At least... The streak can't end twice. It happened in the wrong place, wrong time, with the wrong person, but it's over now. So it is written, so it shall come to pass. Quote Mr. Wonka 7 and suck my dick.